Welcome everyone, it's the Crypto Lark, and today we are discussing the topic of decentralization. Decentralization is of course a very hot buzzword when it comes to crypto, but what does it really mean in practice? How important is decentralization and to what extent can we compromise decentralization for specific use cases, or should we at all? Remember, decentralization as a concept does expand far beyond blockchain. However, blockchain will be the focus of our conversation today. Let's first make sure that we understand centralization. Centralization and its implications defined as the concentration of control of any given activity or organization under a single authority. Essentially, there are gatekeepers through which all users, data, etc. must pass. And the gatekeepers can always say no. The existing centralized banking system, for example, is very indicative of what centralization looks like. Now, what have been the results of centralization? Censorship, frozen accounts, being told what you can and cannot buy, channels on social media disappearing with no explanation, entire communities being called, shadow bans, algorithms are ruling the world, the tech overlords seemingly have all of the power. Political dissent and voices critical of war and voices critical of the power structures seem to be most at risk. Your data is of course stolen and monetized by these very third parties censoring you and they have the power to approve you access to their networks. And of course, they have zero accountability to you. And that is just the tip of the iceberg of the side effects of centralization. Now that we understand centralization, what is decentralization and what are its most important features? Decentralization is defined as the process by which the activities of an organization, particularly those regarding the planning and decision-making are distributed or delegated away from a central authoritative location or group. Essentially, removing the gatekeepers. Key features of decentralization in blockchain are that it is permissionless and censorship resistant. These are some of the key features of the system. That is to say that anyone can use it anywhere, anytime, and anyone can build on it, essentially functioning as an immutable ledger that does not discriminate between users, doesn't shut down, and can't shut you down. There are a few different ways that we can understand decentralization. The first is the decentralization of architecture. Questions like, how many computers is the system made up of? And how many of those computers can go offline and still maintain the system? We have political decentralization. A key question to ask here is how many individuals or organizations control the computers making up the architecture? We have logical decentralization. That is to say, does the data structure itself look like a decentralized system or a single monster?
These can be useful questions to ask yourself when looking at any given blockchain project and trying to answer the question, is it decentralized? Blockchains can meet these ideas to varying degrees, but the best blockchains are not controlled by anyone, have no single point of failure, and logically function like one system. They are also inherently resistant to faults, attacks, and collusion. Although bugs and other problems like geographic minor centralization do still exist. In fact, hardware centralization has become a serious risk in of itself in spite of the proven security of the proof of work systems. Is decentralization dependent on the use case? Or do the battle cries of decentralize everything actually make sense? Bitcoin can stand up to a greater level of threats, for example, from institutions and states, whereas other blockchains may not require such a high level of defense, such as some of the platforms that can guarantee user access. So for example, EOS and a new Facebook built on top of it. However, we see platform level censorship playing out on a worryingly frequent basis. And this, if continued, is likely to disincentivize content creators and make developers less likely to devote their time and energy building on top of these platforms. Projects like EOS can provide a much greater degree of assurance that there will be no censorship. However, what if someone wants to build a WikiLeaks on top of EOS? Will block producers be able to resist calls by governments to shut it down? What about a new Silk Road built on top of EOS or a dApp based on hating brown people? While you may personally agree with these sites and dApps being shut down, we have to question, are we truly being censorship resistant if that is the case? Now, EOS hasn't been tested in those situations yet, just a theoretical. Decentralization in blockchains usually means a compromise of speed. Many of the newer blockchain projects that we see are indeed making this trade-off by sacrificing different degrees of decentralization and therefore censorship resistance to get greater speed and functionality. This is a worrying trend in blockchain. A key misconception is that decentralization is a black or white kind of issue when it is really more of a shades of gray situation across a scale. It is in fact very difficult to measure and quantify decentralization. So saying something is simply decentralized or simply centralized is far too simplistic. Yet another fallacy is that anarchy and chaos will ensue with decentralized systems, that we indeed need a strong central authority in order to protect our money, to protect us from bad people, etc. Look, human nature always corrupts centralized institutions. I'm willing to gamble on decentralization. Mining pools in proof-of-work networks have also been frequently criticized. The pools are centralized and the pools are run by large companies, but anyone can plug in a miner and participate in securing the network. And yet the very nature of mining 
ensures that pools will always form and as a result there will always be some degree of centralization and proof of work networks. The relatively small number of pools and the large power of those pools as well as the power of the hardware makers does remain a concern. Then we have proof of stake systems. EOS, for example, has 21 block producers. Some others have more delegates. Some others have less. But EOS promises censorship resistance and bad behaving block producers can be voted out if they compromise this or other principles that the community has laid out. This is, of course, assuming that cartels do not form, thus ensuring a continued monopoly on power of the block producers. Now, I know I have mentioned EOS quite a few times during this chat, but that is only because EOS provides a good example on alternative models and ideas of decentralization outside of course of the proof of work models it should not be interpreted as any kind of attack on eos by inferring that eos is centralized because let's refer back to our previous discussion on shades of decentralization eos is decentralized it's only a question of how decentralized it is and of course, the more decentralized, the better. Decentralized systems need to be able to withstand state level attacks. Blockchains that are weak on decentralization and therefore weak on permissionlessness and weak on censorship resistance are inherently not useful for creating a freer society. Although they may have wide use cases for businesses and for governments. Even then, so many of these services offered around cryptocurrencies are currently centralized. Exchanges being a key example of this. But we can code for trust in decentralized systems. However, people do remain wary of what they do not know. It is also worth noting that the decentralized aspects of the crypto market are largely a response to market demand. Decentralization as a mindset is going to take some time to get used to because people have been living in a highly centralized world, but we can get there. Decentralization is a balancing act and there is no one glove fits all approach. Blockchain technology will be used by governments. It will be used by big corporations and it will be used by all kinds of bad actors to do terrible nefarious things. But when it comes to the underlying principles of decentralization, a lot of blockchain technology will not deliver on this. And yet, the decentralized systems bringing the strongest degrees of decentralization to society may very well be the building blocks and the keystones of our future society assuming that they can continue to ensure permissionlessness and censorship resistance. Thanks so much for watching the episode on decentralization. Let me know what you think about it down below in the comment section. Thumbs up the video and share these videos around the internet to help our community grow. Come and join the conversation over on Twitter or Telegram. Long live the blockchain and peace out till next time.